There is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You'll hear stories about the supernatural and so much more right here on Supernatural Confrontations. Our story today, we interviewed a woman by the name of Lisa. Um, it's, what I love about the story is, it, it seems like, well, maybe it was a dream, maybe it was real, really not too sure. We'll get into that and so much more, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Did you know that the aging process starts as early as the age of 25? After that, you start to lose about 1% of your collagen supply every year. Folks, try this at home test, I have, to see if you've got enough collagen. Pinch your skin. If it immediately bounces back, then you have enough collagen in your skin. If it doesn't bounce back or fold back immediately, then you might need a collagen supplement. Multi-collagen helps rejuvenate your body from the inside out with five supercharged types of collagen your body needs for optimal health. Give it a try. Your health is your wealth after all. Taste, inspect, and judge risk-free for yourself. If it doesn't live up to your expectations, this is an incredible deal, ladies and gentlemen. You have a full 60 days to get a complete refund, no questions asked. Plus, you'll get 51% off, along with several free bonuses included at no extra cost. Go to the link below, healthwithla.com, healthwithla.com. Folks, I take it every day. So, as usual, what we'll do is we'll let Lisa tell her story, and I'll weigh in at the very end, but I think you'll find it interesting. Here's her testimony. So Lisa, first of all, thanks so much for joining us here on Supernatural Confrontations. And for those folks who are watching, you know, it takes a certain amount of verve, as it were, and courage to, to come on the show and talk about some of these things, because some of them absolutely sound, you know, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. And if you, if you walk into a church, a lot of churches, and say stuff like this, people go, whoa, you know, maybe you get a, better get on some meds. But we know when we read the word, when we read our Bibles, that all sorts of stuff happens there. You know, talking donkeys, floating axe head, people that disappear and then reappear. I'm talking about Philip, men that walk on water, men that are raised from the dead. I mean, you know, it just goes on and on and on. So I'm all about the supernatural in the sense that I, I'm a frank supernaturalist. So Lisa, thanks for joining the show. Tell us what happened. Well, I've had several supernatural encounters. The scariest one was several years ago. And I honestly, to be honest, I don't know if it was a dream or if it was real, but I woke up to see a, this demon in my face choking me. And it's just the scariest face, this big, huge mouth. And I, I couldn't say anything. I just thought the name Jesus and instantly it vanished. And again, I don't know if that was real or a dream, but that was like the one of the scariest encounters that I've had. What, did, look, what, what did it look like? It had just like this huge, like white face with this big red mouth, just open wide. It just looked very evil. Now, after you rebuke it, did you then wake up or tell us what happens? After? Yeah, it's, it's really hard to know if I was asleep. It was either like a really bad dream or it happened as I woke up and I woke up to see it. Again, I'm not really sure exactly which one it was. And, you know, other people have said the same thing. There's like this. They're, they're not sure, you know, what, what happened. Did you feel paralyzed when this thing was going on? It happened so fast, honestly, because it's just like, it wasn't even like a bad dream before leading up to it. It's just like all of a sudden I see this demon in my face and the, the hands around my neck choking me. And I just thought, Jesus, that's all I could do. Just call out to Jesus. And it just went away. And then I think I prayed after that. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Yeah. I would. So yes. <laughs> any, anything else you'd like to talk about since I got you here? Yes, I had um, some supernatural encounters a year ago at Thanksgiving. I went to Colorado to visit my aunt and had, had like a family reunion. And she lives in a, a house that's like 100 years old. Wow. It's, um, it's like a three-story mansion. It's been restored. 
And she was giving us a tour of the house. And um, when we were up on the third floor, she said that my cousin had detected this dark energy on the third floor. So we really didn't think anything about it. But that night in bed, I was, um, my sister and I were both sharing a bedroom in, in like a, in a bed together. And um, my sister had this cold and she was having trouble falling asleep. And like every time she fell asleep, it was really strange. She would like wake up with this really loud noise coming out of her mouth. And I'd never heard it before and she never experienced it before either. It's very strange. And she does teach yoga and she does remote healing, which I think is demonic activities. I, I, I would concur with that. Yeah. Yes. And so it could have been a demon tormenting her. It could have been something that was in the house that was, you know, tormenting us. But every time she fell asleep, she would just wake up. And so, and she would wake me up because she'd make this noise. And so it was probably like one or 2 a.m. And, you know, we still hadn't really fallen asleep. And she got up to use the restroom. And I was in bed and I felt the bed move and shake. And at this point, I was the only one in the bed. And so it started moving on its own. And then I felt something just not really pull tight and hard, but just kind of like playfully pull on my hair. And so instantly I just said out loud, I said, in the name of Jesus, leave. And then I started praying and it didn't bother me anymore after that. And we, she came back and we both went to sleep, slept the rest of the night. The next morning I said, did anything strange happen last night? She said, yeah, um, I felt something tap my arm three times when she was in bed. And I told her my experience. And, um, and then like the next day, my brother-in-law said he had felt something tap his head when he was in bed. And my niece's uh, friend had felt, had heard like a male voice speaking in her ear and there are no, no guys around. So I think it was a, a demonic activity. Um, what's the history of the house? Did anyone die in the rooms or was there blood spilled on the house, some kind of murder or? Not that I know of. I just know like a, a family moved from the East Coast and built it to, the woman had tuberculosis and they wanted like a, a room with lots of sunshine that's got lots of windows. And so she could have died, I don't know, but I know the Red Cross used it as their headquarters after that. And then a doctor bought it and he did not take care of it. He let his dogs have accidents in the house. And um, my, my aunt and uncle restored it. It was all very nice, but I don't really know the history other than that. Interesting. Uh, did, did your aunt, when you told her, did you tell your aunt this? this what we did. She just kind of she... laughed. She kind of laughed about it. So um, I know like I was looking through the house and in her library, she had a book by Eckhart Tolle, which is a new age teacher. Sure. And she had like a statue with like a Buddha with an elephant head, which I don't know if that's demonic or not, but it could have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I figured it might be. So she may have been attracting that to her house, possibly. So any, any other thoughts? Any, um, I'll give you the last word. Okay, well, I think it actually followed me home because that, that like later on, like after I got back uh, that week, I was here in my classroom at school. I was just working at my desk and I felt something tap my head and I, I thought something fell out of the ceiling. I looked around, there's nothing. So again, I just rebuked it in the name of Jesus. And uh, also one night in bed, I was that same week, I was um, in bed and I woke up and I saw like this skull with these evil eyes, evil red eyes floating above my bed. And again, I just said, in the name of Jesus, leave. And I prayed and it, it left. So I think it kind of followed me home, but then I have, it hasn't bothered me since then. And the only thing I'd like to say is just, you know, the name of Jesus works because I have a relationship with him. It's not like a magic word. And so if you don't have a relationship with him, just give your life to Jesus, believe that he died for you and rose again from the dead, surrender your life to him. And that's the best way to get rid of these demonic attacks is through the power of Jesus. Amen. You know, I, I, it's just well said. Well, oh, thank said. you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, thanks for coming on the record, Lisa. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you. Too. What I do find interesting is is this this place between dreaming and being awake. It's it's like this place where we're right in between. And she's not sure, did this really happen? Did I really see this? Was it just a really horrible dream? Or in fact, was it a manifestation of something evil? We're told, and I'll, once again, I'll go to Ephesians 6, that, you know, put on the armor of God. Why? Because our, we, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, archons, Asusia, as, as the late Russ Dizdar lectured us in and taught us all, cosmocraters, rulers of this dark, unseen world. We, and I realize, you know, a lot of people look at this and they just kind of laugh and, well, it really doesn't apply to me, you know, 
uh, we're, we're good Christians, and there really is no such thing as spiritual warfare. And, and I'll get into that in just a second. I'm going to elaborate on that <clears throat> with a story that you've heard me talk about before, but I'm going to reiterate it again. But it's very pertinent. Bottom line is the supernatural is real. And when we clothe ourselves with the armor of God, when we put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the blessed plate of righteousness, the belt of truth, <clears throat> the good news of the gospel, we, we, so wherever we go, that, that peace of the gospel travels with us. The shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, right? And, and we put these things on, <clears throat> literally. I, I, when I put on the helmet of salvation every day, I say, and, and Father, I, I anoint the, the doorposts of my mind with the blood of a lamb. That's what I say. I anoint the doorposts and the thresholds of my mind with the blood of a lamb. Nothing comes through. Nothing comes through. And if it does and I don't check it, usually the Holy Spirit taps me on my shoulder and goes, hey, look at this. And I take authority over it and cast it out. Because once we let something in, it begins to get root and it will change our behavior slowly over time. And that's why confession is, is so important, no matter what it is. And putting on the armor of God and asking the Holy Spirit to convince us of our shortcomings, of the things that we do which are not of Him. But here's the story I promised to... To, to tell you, years ago, I was a worship leader at a church, and I, I'm not going, well, okay, it was the Malibu Vineyard. I wasn't going to give it away, but it's the Malibu Vineyard. And I'm not trying to disparage anyone about the Malibu Vineyard or the people that were in charge or the pastors or assistant pastors, and I was the, the music director slash worship leader for only a few short months, and then the, the church had a horrific split. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So as music director, worship leader, I would get to the church very early in the morning, um, usually around 7, 7.30. I'd open up the doors, turn on the heater, turn on all the equipment, you know, make sure the sound, and the soundboard was state of the art. It was unbelievable. And, and all the lights and just get everything up and running and make sure the music was in order and, you know, music, just get everything set, the stuff that a worship leader does. And, and I arrived very, very early in the morning. So I get out of the car and I, and I walk up and this, the, this particular building had like a portico in front of it. So it was a covered roof and it was about maybe 35 or 40 feet before you get to the front door. And as I'm walking through the port, immediately I see something in front of the front door and I realize, uh-oh, this isn't normal, this isn't right. And as I get closer, I realize it's a circle with a pentagram, a slaughtered dove and two candles which are still burning. I believe it was only two candles. I could be wrong on that. But the candles were still burning. The candles were still burning. Think about it. Slaughtered dove, pentagram, circle. So the janitor was there, Carlos, and, and he and I cleaned the thing up. And I didn't say anything about it, but Monday was our staff meeting. So that Monday I came in and, and I told everybody there was, you know, a ritual a ritual done on the front door of, of, of this church, on the front steps of this church. And everybody poo-pooed it. All the other leaders said, well, you know, we're, we're protected by the Lord, blah, 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 blah. And we never, we never did anything. We never countered it. Uh, maybe a short prayer. And again, I'm not trying to disparage anyone. I'm just trying to say that this that a lot of times in our churches, we don't understand what the other side is up to. There was a coven of witches and warlocks in Malibu proper. They're probably still here today. And they did not like the vineyard. Why? Because upwards of 20 or 30 people a week were getting saved there. People were getting healed. Worship was off the hook. And I'm not patting myself on the back. The Lord was all over that church for a period of time. People were being drawn to it. And, and there were real healings that were happening. I mean, people getting healed of cancer, not just, you know, a bad limp. But I mean, we're talking stage three, stage four cancer. Marat miracles were happening. And, and the miracle of salvation was happening. And we did not counteract that with prayer. And here's the punchline. What was it, maybe two or three months after that? The church had one of the most horrific splits I've ever been involved in. It was a Sunday morning uh, kabuki theater where people were grabbing microphones and people who hadn't been in that church for months were, were coming in there to try to gain favor and position or position themselves into leadership. And the church split. I went with the pastor, which unfortunately turned out to be a huge mistake and um, whatever. And the church was divided. And eventually, we lost the building. The building 
was valued at the time of the split of about $20 million. City Hall, it's now Malibu City Hall. It is a state-of-the-art um, building. A lot of high rollers that went to that church donated, several of them, a million dollars to build out that facility. I think it cost, the initial bill was about five or six million, but by the time the, the vineyard had been there, the, just the price of that building had appreciated so much, $20 million. So it just, the favor of the Lord, you know, Ichabod, I had a word actually. Um, we went back um, a, peri a period of time after um, we had left and I had left the other, the other church. And I had sort of a Christian, Christian band together and we went and we led worship at what was the Malibu Vineyard. They were calling it something else. Very dark, very sparsely attended. And I had a word which uh, I did not tell the leadership uh, because I figured it would fall on deaf ears, but the word was Ichabod, the glory of the Lord has departed. Ichabod, the glory of the Lord has departed. And sure enough, a short period of time. By the way, the, the, one of the head elders died of a massive heart attack at 49 years old. The pastor um, who, there were problems there. And I, I'm not trying to air dirty laundry here, but I'm just saying that there were, there were problems in this church. And he passed away three or four years after the fact. And none of that needed to take place. All of that could have been salvaged. There is a supernatural world. And we need, as Christians, especially in leadership positions, we need to understand that the battle is real. It's visceral. The enemy hates what we do, hates us, and wants to do to us what <clears throat> he did to Jesus. Kill us. That's the bottom line. Any way, shape, or form. What does the scripture say? That, that the fallen one, the devil, Satan, the dragon, comes to rob, kill, and destroy. We don't take that seriously enough, in my opinion. So circling back to Lisa, rob, kill, and destroy. There's that, there's that thing which is roaring like a roaring lion. I've heard that once many, many years ago as I was getting ready to fall asleep and it terrified me. I was a brand new Christian and I clutched the Bible and all I could say was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. As I was trying to get back to sleep, I had just laid my head down on the pillow, just put my head down on the pillow and all of a sudden I heard roar like that. It was unbelievable, unbelievable. And uh, it terrified me. And later on, I realized that the enemy goes around like a, like a roaring lion, seeks to devour. I was a brand new Christian, and he was definitely seeking to devour me. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. 42 years, it'll be 43 years this June. Anyway, folks, um, we are doing a pre-sale, if I can switch gears here. We are doing a pre-sale on number four. I think, it's, I think and I, I say this, no hype. This may be the most important film I've ever done. It's on the abduction phenomena. We'll have a new trailer up for you today. You can watch that. Um, we are doing a pre-sale on it. Also, it'll be available. It, it goes to the duplicator, so we'll be, we'll be shipping this in two weeks. So the pre-sale is only for about maybe 10 or 12 days, and then we'll get rid of that. Thank you for your support and your patronage. We really appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. It's a little early. And I realize there's all sorts of controversy about Thanksgiving. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for those who came before us. No country, no country is without sin, as it were. And certainly we have black marks in, in our country, what we did to the First Nation people and the whole slavery issue. But you know what? We've tried to make amends. We've tried to make amends. And so, you know, bully for us. And I love this country. But uh, you can order the, the film. It's on abductions. There are four people who have been abducted and they tell their testimonies. And at the very end, we bring them all in in a Zoom meeting. I think you'll find this film fascinating. Uh, it, what it does do is it uncovers the, the dark secrets of the dragon. That's what it uncovers. And uh, here's the trailer. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you tomorrow with a very special On the Trail of the Nephilim presentation. Something very dark and disturbing is happening. It is a global phenomenon that knows no boundaries and adheres to no cultural mores. And the ones who are engaged in this nefarious activity do so with impunity. People are being taken against their will. In the cover of darkness in the dead of night, they are subjected to bizarre examinations that are often sexual in nature. These people are terrified, violated, confused, and with no place to turn to, as who would believe them?
This is their story.